Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. And we got to dig into the James O'Barr archives a little bit, man. We covered a lot of stuff, but there's one big story that we still haven't uh, shown off in great detail yet. What do you have for us ahead of time, Jim? I have my Patreon at patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. You can see lots of my original art, a lot of my process stuff. I'm going through some Street Angel comics right now and comparing the same story that I drew a couple of different times. And what Ed is flipping through here are zines and mini comics that I make. If you follow Cartoonist Kayfabe, you've seen videos of me doing these kind of assembly processes and how I make this stuff. I love making zines and mini comics, but in some cases, very small print runs. So once they're out of print, I put them on my Patreon. If you join that Patreon, you can download these as PDFs. A lot of drawing zines, a lot of mini comics, things of that nature. So if you like my comics and you like comics talk, you'll get lots more of that at patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. I could look at these all day, dude. I Super love that cool. wrestling one, man. Super cool. <laughs> I love them all, man. Red Room, issue one and two are available for pre-order as of this recording. It's going to be a monthly horror comic. Each issue completely self-contained. First issue, 64 pages. Uh, you could pre-order and reserve your copy through Fantagraphics uh, at the uh, link in my link tree below this video, but it's going to hit the comic shops. Uh, you don't want to take for granted that your store is going to automatically order you a bunch of copies. So let them know, give them the nudge, and get it put on your pull list. It's going to come out reliably. I've, I've nearly six issues completely finished. The Patreon that I have, uh, patreon.com slash edpiscor, uh, showcases all of the artwork and comic pages ahead of time. So the first two issues are up there right now. Uh, at a pretty nice resolution, as per this bootleg that was sent to us this morning, uh, you can see that it's very legible. You're not getting like some kind of fuzzy, low-res uh, image. Perhaps you make your own bootleg. Just send me a copy. Yeah, I, I really admire this version. We've seen several bootlegs roll through here, and uh, as somebody who likes to make zines and mini-comics and small-run items, I gotta tip my hat at this guy, man. Well done. I can't wait to read it. <laughs> <laughs> Hit the link tree, you'll get uh, you'll get access to, to all that stuff that I just mentioned. And uh, Jim, let's take a look at some James O'Barr comics. Slave Cylinder is the one that uh, I'm interested in. And before you flip it, I just want to point out the Kitchen Sink Comics, publisher of, of Crow, uh, you know, one of several publishers of The Crow. That's who published The Crow when the movie came out, whenever I first came in contact with him. Obviously a, a hot book, so I'm sure they were looking for more things to do uh, with James O'Barr to, to satiate the James O'Barr fans following The Crow. I assume that's how this project comes about, but uh, I didn't realize it was Kitchen Sink until you know prepping notes for this, this episode because you can find his work in a variety of small publishers, indie black and white type publishers. Kitchen Sink, I feel you know a step above that um, for a while. I would mail order comics from them, you know, Charles Burns, Eddie Campbell, very reputable. And they kind of took over after Tundra. You That's know, what those I was two companies say, yeah. came together, which is how I think the Crow came to call Kitchen Sink Home for a while. Exactly. And these are uh, collected from various places, uh, some of them being Tundra publications. So we'll just breeze through Pink Dust on a Yellow Moon. It's kind of like a, uh, it's like a weird kind of uh, sexual scenario between these two uh, creatures, a kind of mating ritual between these kind of... Uh, would they be Nephilims? I, I'm, not, I'm not too up on my angel lore. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> it's uh, a bit of visual poetry, and if you're a fan of James O'Barr, it's a chance to see drawings by James O'Barr. Right, yeah. yeah. Rare, rare morsels when you look at uh, you know successful cartoonists that have bibliographies. He's a su successful guy, thanks, thanks to The Crow. Ain't that many comic pages, man. Yeah, I would love to see more James O'Barr drawings and comics. So, James? Yes. This is the namesake <laughs> story for, for the issue. Like, they, after their mating ritual, it's almost like uh, when, 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 when birds fuck. The idea, like, you know, they fall and until the, they fit, complete the action, then they could break apart and fly away. But if not, that's kind of like uh, these guys. <laughs> now, here's the one. This is what we want, Jimmy. Slave Cylinder. First appeared in, what was it called, Bonesaw? Bonesaw, a, an anthology by Tundra, and this story was in color in Bonesaw. Makes perfect sense, because when I think of James O'Barr, I think of texture, I think of uh, multi multimedia in terms of tones and duo shade and heavy black. 
we get a lot of open space here. Makes sense that this was in color, drawn for color. Yeah, and you'll see, you know, on the very first page, Wiley Coyote there, he's driving a Plymouth Roadrunner. Uh, this is adapted from a short story that is also in Bone Saw, uh, the short story. Mm -hmm. So you can read the original prose there. And James O'Barr at the time talked about the story and kind of the genesis for it and connected some of the ideas and the energy of cyberpunk with like the Warner Brother Looney Tune cartoons like Roadrunner and Wile E. Coyote, which I think is pretty interesting to think about cyberpunk with that idea of the energy that comes with it, because it is very distinct, you know, as a genre. And uh, it's kind of cool. Like, I, I love this idea of energy. Some comics have these different levels. Um, part of what I like about James O'Barr's work is that kind of energy level. And we'll see it on display in this comic. You see it in The Crow. Um, but the drawing, right? I mean, he's a virtuoso drawer, and you get to see it on most of these pages. I drew some conclusions when we were taking a look at the Caliber Presents works, and I suggested maybe he was like a, especially with the um, expressive eyes, maybe he was looking at Michael Golden or somebody, uh, hit me up and was like, I and Michael Golden were both looking at Masamuni Shiro Appleseed comics before they even came to Viz, like import Tanko Bon volumes of Appleseed blew our freaking minds. And looking at this, I, I see the influence. Like I, I see this very congested panel and even the, the tech of this, it feels like manga backgrounds, man. And having like the kind of cartoony figure amongst it, it looks, you, you, you fuzz out the focus of your eyes you have American manga type drawing, right? Yeah, I'm glad to hear that insight because this drawing does look different than The Crow. Certainly you see some similarities, but some of the line work, uh, some of the foreshortening, some of the way he's bending the cars around, um, it's really different, a different visual than what we're used to. I mean, the setting, you know, it's like this desert highway that they're racing on. And I love these kind of things uh, to delineate, say, the canyon walls, the cliffs around them. Yeah. Because they're also like speed lines. Sure. Even though we're describing rocks and stuff that he's racing around. This this kind of like little language here, that's very manga. Mm -hmm. You get a lot of that in manga. Speed. Like, to, to, to create that speed. And, and you know, the, all the wheels of this car are on the road. But what you do is you don't connect the... To, you don't connect the ellipse like you you hatch that stuff you know you feather that stuff to create that sense of motion but you see that there too man it's that manga vibe yeah completely and uh, basically we're looking at a person getting fucked up dui in like that's, that's exactly comic. right yeah th this car it, you know it's in the future you see i think that's a police car that goes by at one point that's like a hovercraft kind of vehicle but he has a conversation with his car. Think of Knight Rider. Yeah. For lack of a better example, I apologize, James. I'm sure that's not very cool compared to this. All right. <laughs> but basically, he's taking control of the uh, of the car that's an automated car. He wants to drive it. He's, he's stoned out of his mind or whatever on these drugs. He's on this really cool scenic highway, and he wants to uh, take control of the wheel. So, yeah, definitely a DUI, you know, sci-fi future uh, moment. Look at those little wily coyotes up there, man, waiting for ready to pounce a couple of ways that you see like manga speed you've already pointed out ed another one is this kind of harsh perspective i yeah. think that's a way that you get some speed built in and then this is cool because that's your warrant you know that's your that's your classic coyote kind of cartoon reference where he's sitting up ahead of the road runner on the road he's built his elaborate acme trap right that's what we're seeing there right he's got these wheels the, the coyote has these wheels that he's ready to unleash on this car and here they go, man. We have just entered Fury Road, baby. Wow, yeah. <laughs> I think the odd angles of those wheels helps with speed. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It's a, it's a very kinetic uh, image. At, at the beginning, after all the weird stuff we've been dealing with, with this character talking to like little cartoon characters in, 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 in the back seat, uh, for pages and pages, I was like... Are these coyotes even real? Yeah, I'll be curious about your conclusion of that. <laughs> I can't tell you anything that's real in here, except for the lettering, which we've pointed out in the Crow video. I really like uh, Obar's lettering. It's distinct. It's legible. 
Um, I dig it, man. I, I think that speaks to his level of cartooning. We don't have as many pages as I wish we had, but the quality of his lettering and the distinct, unique qualities, to me, speak of a cartoonist. With this panel, it leads me to think that perhaps James is a little bit of an Anglophile with that with that two-finger sawed-off uh, gimmick. We don't do that around these parts. <laughs> Could be right. These circle wheel things are, are so awesome, like in this in this bottom panel, too, where you have them going two different directions to continue that chaos yeah. on the They're streets. They're very man. weird, the, that, that circle design for the coyote vehicles. Yeah. I always think of Grant Morrison's Animal Man issue with the right. coyote. And, and we looked at that on a previous video. You can track that down in, the, in Cartoonist Kayfabe. But I feel like these two as like companion reads is really cool to think of coyote as this archetypal American character. It's perfect, too, because I would bet that Morrison and James O'Barr are of the same peer group, you know, like just deluged with Looney Tunes or whatever when, when they were growing up, man. So, you know, at this point, uh, the revisionist superhero has been done to death at this moment. Let's uh, let's revise uh, some some Looney, some Chuck Jones. Yeah. And the other element is how similar this character is to Sandman. Yeah, for sure. Which is a kind of a weird. But so is link. the crow. Like, I, I feel like Fair. Gaiman, Gaiman, it's the sphere of influence, man. Ping pong and back and forth. And you're right, by the way, man, because there are those little uh, creatures like in the car that are homies with our guy and jumping on the dude. So yeah. it's like, OK, yeah, maybe nothing. Nothing is real here. <laughs> this reminds me so much of Speed Racer. The Mach 5, it even looks like it, but also the terrains look like it. You know, like Screen Racer used to race around those cliffs. For sure, man. And, you know, James O'Barr hailing from, like, Detroit, they know about cars there. Yeah, that was always, uh, you would get the little pieces in, like, whatever caliber presents, and it'd be like the cars were always amazing that he would draw. Listen, man, that's the civic pride of the neighborhood. <laughs> this image right there, it, it, it feels like like time kind of stops for a minute to just, like, let you linger on this little uh, piece of roadkill. Page after page of relentless battery on these cars, man. And on, on uh, our coyotes. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a darker version than we would get from <laughs> from Looney Tunes. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll, a little more graphic. We'll continue getting there, man. Uh, the kind of manga-ish eyes. You know, like that. that is like American manga type type eyes. But you really do kind of feel the speed of this moment right here. Yeah, this must be early, early 90s, possibly late 80s, whenever this thing is coming together, this story. And that American manga thing is is worth noting. I see it a lot in my quarter bins and 50 cent bins of like that first generation, the Ben Dunn's, the yeah. Antarctic Presses. Uh, people who were trying to figure this stuff out. They loved the manga that they saw and trying to figure out like, how does it work? How do I make this? And uh, those eyes are, are very telling of that time period. Our, our wolves are... Or excuse me, our coyotes <laughs> continue to speak, man, as they get uh, beat up. Morphine, please. Oh no! And where's the coup de gras? Right there. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I really like this drawing too. It's good. Where you have your heavy ink brush lines next to a very fine, delicate pen line. Yeah, that delicate pen line. That that's that's the X factor here. It is for for James O'Barr. Like we never see that in any of his other comics always a heavy hand lots of brush but this is um lots of pen this is another moment that i'm reminded of something like an apple seed not exactly but with that screen tone the character kind of a nice frame shot of that character with some of the compositions here i think of hewlett's fireball that's a good one too. That's that's your other double feature. You know, if you want to go, if you want to double down on the car part, yeah, go to go to Fireball. This very is, similar this is time really cool. period for that too would have been late eighties, early nineties. Right, so maybe something in the air, and and a big Looney Tune cartoony influence in Fireball. That's right, Hanna Barbera, Wacky Racers, baby. Yeah, this is really sick right here, man. So that mace comes down, hits the hood, and just yanks off. Yeah, the uh, hood of that thing, man. Great texture with that with that mace thing landing. It's good storytelling. <laughs> you can't have a Roadrunner Wiley Coyote story if you don't have this moment right here. Also, James O'Barr was a military man. 
before he was making comics. And you know military men, man, they, call, they call those hand grenades pineapples. <laughs> <laughs> so you got the poofer. Throw that hand grenade down on him. You don't have a big payoff there. You don't see a, like a big explosion on the coyote or anything like that. It's just kind of over. Our, our guy is like laying at the edge of the cliff. And is this, uh, is this William S. Burroughs? Looks like it, right? This guy right I, I made no connection to that, but when you say that, it definitely looks like him. This is a tough. This is a tough page, because I think the gimmick is he stops short, so he doesn't go. The car doesn't go over the cliff, and you know it propels him out of the car. It just doesn't really read right. No. It's funny because so much of the movement and motion in this comic are spectacular, but that that piece just doesn't translate well. Right. Um, I don't know. That that's a peculiar part. The, the Burroughs thing is interesting. That that kind of makes sense, I think. Yeah, he, you know, he's pulling a little uh, Peter David out here. Young man, may I call you an ambulance, please? You're an ambulance, right? <laughs> Peter David wrote that page. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's all. Yeah, it's a good ending. Uh, yeah, kind of a good ending there. Yeah. And then, you know, he's got his outlawish girl drawing drawings. I even like that coyote drawing. No, that's sick as hell, man. It has Von Baudet, uh bits to it, to me, man. Like the pose and stuff is like Cobalt 60 or whatever that shit was called. The line is mildly uncomfortable. You know, you, like I think of Looney Tunes and they're so slick. Yeah. And and this one isn't that slickness and it kind of kind of makes it like, I don't know, dirty or something. <laughs> that's the other thing about like the Von Baudet line to me, man, is like it's a cartoony image, but you got this like rough around the edges kind of marker line. The other part that it reminds me of, we talked about like the early American manga yeah. stuff, is the animal comics of that era of sure. the 80s where, you know, it's it's probably moving toward furries, but maybe not quite there yet. But definitely these these human animal type characters and it feels like yeah, you could put that next to an issue of Critters, you know, you know <laughs> like that could appear in Critters. Obar's a drawer, and you see this right here, Obar slash Bode. So that's interesting. Mm, yeah. So there must be some some connection there. Uh, but this piece right here to me is like total like outlaw image, man. Toned up, duo shaded. The anatomy is kind of crazy. You know, you're, you're kind of drawing every. Ve muscle in some way you know like that's almost like a visual drawing yeah yeah you mentioned visual when we were talking about this before we started recording and i agree totally you see kind of striations in some of the muscle you know it's a little bit overly muscle uh, definition which i associate with the visual anatomy um you see that here the duo shade and screen tone combo i find interesting mm -hmm. um that's a lot that's yeah. a lot of stuff to put together <laughs> in a in a drawing so it's kind of cool you don't see it that often and uh this is kind of a cool piece, man, that we'll leave on. Uh, first printing, 1998, uh, www.kitchensink.com. I am going to the Wayback Machine to see what the 1990s uh, comic book websites look like. Yeah, I can't imagine. They note the free catalog request down there in an email, catalogs at kitchensink.com. Um, and you, you know, know, this was my, I, I bought a lot of indies from that catalog. So, and I poured over, you know, like that was where I learned about a lot of indies from just reading every word in those catalogs. This is the cool shit though, because, uh, we were all still way too chicken to be putting our credit card number into some internet website, man. So it's like, yeah, we have a website, but you call for the catalog, you mail the stuff off, man, because we're all too freaked out about, yeah. uh, putting our credit card numbers into the computer 1998 do you know when kitchen sink goes under like that's pretty late in the run that's that's probably four or five years after they uh you know join with tundra mm -hmm. yeah I, I think i think they were still uh straggling around when you and i first were, were kicking it to be honest because the those uh spirit new new adventures were kitchen sink and i think they were coming out when we were hanging out like 2002 I like seeing his pencil sketches. Yeah. I don't see a lot of those anywhere. And maybe you can find them online, but I always like seeing the pencils. Kind of get a sense of how people draw, how they compose their drawings. Yeah, for sure. Anyhow, man, some of the last uh, James O'Barr stuff. I guess we're going to have to look at Zeitgeist sometime, Jimmy. I'm always up for Zeitgeist. <laughs> <laughs> you can find it in any number of uh, pub of North, North Star publications, man. Anyhow, I digress. 
Kayfabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what do you have? Join me on Patreon at patreon.com slash jimrug, where you can find some of my rare out-of-print zines and mini-comics, a lot of original art, a lot of process stuff. Patreon.com slash jimrug. Red Room issue one and two are available for pre-order as of this recording. It's going to be coming out on a monthly basis beginning in May 2021. Get your store to reserve your copies if you haven't reserved it through the Fantagraphics website. You can read these comics ahead of time on my Patreon, patreon.com slash edpiscor. Keep up with Cartoonist Kayfabe by subscribing to our e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. I feel like listening to some Joy Division, Jimmy, man. Give these guys some merchant orders. We'll get out of here. Read more Outlaw comics.